Hello and a warm welcome to Advanced Audit and Assurance, your path to AAA excellence. If you are gearing up for the AAA exam previously recognized as the P7 exam, you are at the right place. In this video, we will walk through the past exam question. Get ready, we are not just studying the past exam question, we are unlocking the secrets to decoding the scenarios, finding numerous points we can make in the exam to gain marks easily, masterfully drafting answers up to the examiner standards, and skyrocketing your chances of success in the AAA exam. Stay tuned for game-changing insights that will transform your approach and elevate your ACCA journey. Let's go ahead. In this video, let us discuss March 2020 question number 2A part 2 and part 3. Why part 2 and part 3 together because have a look at the question requirement. It says in respect of the issues related to the development costs and trade receivables detailed in exhibit number 1. Number 2. Comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained. So we have to comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained on development costs and trade receivables. Right. So we will be uh, commenting on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained during the audit of this group. Right. And the part number three says recommend the actions to be taken by the auditor. So it's the actions to be taken by the auditor, right? Recommend the actions to be taken by the auditor, including the further evidence which should be obtained, right? So, and 11 marks in all. To, you see this thing? It says 11 marks in all. So it's part 2 and part 3 together. A part 2 and part 3 together, which are for 11 marks together. So we would attempt part 2 and part 3 together first we would do the development costs and then in the other part we would continue with the trade receivables because development cost should be answered separately that is the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained or development cost should be uh, uh, you know attempted separately and trade receivables should be attempted separately let us see the exhibit how the information is provided in the exhibit number one now see this is exhibit number one and we just attempted the fraud portion in the last video and the materiality for the whole group is given 400,000. This is in continuation for the other parts part A, 2 and 3 also. So this is the materiality which was given in exhibit number one in the first paragraph. Then the fraud part which we answered in part A part one. Now part A part two tells us to answer development cost that is to tell the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained on development cost and for together with that we need to tell the recommendations for the auditor for the actions to be taken and we need to further tell the further actions that the auditor should perform on development cost and trade receivables so see we are provided with both these information trade receivables and development costs separately so let us attempt them in two videos in separate videos development cost continues in this video and next video we would continue with the trade receivables but we would be answering part a part two and three together all right so let us read the question requirement uh, details provided in this within this development cost paragraph in august 20x4 the group commenced development of a new security system Okay, so the group has commenced a development of a new security system. So it's in the development phase right now. So uh, don't you think a general knowledge right now? I'm sharing with you a general knowledge. Don't you think that the group auditor or the group would have performed rather the group would have performed some research before conducting the development cost of a new security system, right? Because they have started incurring some development costs, there would be some research which would have been conducted earlier and that research would have been expensed out in the previous years or in the current year, you know, because research cost is always expensed. You know that from your IFRS, IAS studies. 
right now see and incurred expenditure of dollar 600000 up to the financial year end so the group has commenced development costs on a new security system development costs are always capitalized and the incurred expenditure is of 600000 up to the financial year end right so you are clear with this which has been capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. This is the accounting treatment which the group has performed already. Because see, the group has commenced development of a new security system in August 2004 and it has incurred expenditure of up to $600,000 up to the financial year end which has been capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. Up till now, if you are reading this sentence in, a, in one go, nothing seems inappropriate. Everything seems fine, but you know, you are the auditor. You need to focus on this thing that no, nothing is right. Each and every sentence is given for a specific reason, with a specific reason behind that sentence. So I would suggest, no, you should not agree with this sentence in one go. If I read it in one go, you see this. You also read with me in one go. In August 20X4, the group commenced development of a new security system and incurred expenditure of dollar six hundred thousand up to the financial year end, which has been capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. Nothing seems inappropriate over here. I don't feel anything wrong. Do you feel anything wrong? But here your skepticism comes in. You need to be skeptical when you are reading the sentence requirement or the sentence provided in the scenario. You need to be skeptical. Now see what I am the way I am doing it. It's during the year in August 20x4, the group has commenced development of a new security system. Hold on. It has commenced development of a new security system. But before commencing to development cost, before the commencement of development cost, there would have been some research which would have been done for this new security system. Go back to your financial accounting studies. Go back, recall, there is some research cost, there is some development cost and the development cost is capitalized as an intangible asset but research cost is always expensed out. You as an auditor should be skeptical, you should have a question in mind. You should think in this way that yes, the, the group has commenced development of a new security system so there would have been some research cost incurred for before this and this research cost would have been expensed out in the previous accounting year or in the current accounting year. You should identify the research costs which the group has identified and which the group has expensed. You should find out the expense amount in the profit and loss account to confirm that yes, the research cost has been uh, expensed rather than capitalized. Don't you think so? Yes, you need to be skeptical. See how we made a point. Then see, and incurred expenditure of dollar six hundred thousand. Dollar six hundred thousand expense. So dollar six hundred thousand is you know material. You are sure about this? I am sure about this because dollar four hundred thousand was our materiality level for the group. And it says dollar six hundred thousand. So this is material over here in this case. Up to the financial year end. Okay, for the current year, this expense has been uh, capitalized as development cost of dollar six hundred thousand, and this is material to the financial statements to the group financial statements, and which has been capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. Now, one more thing comes in. This treatment is correct; it has been capitalized, but since they are identifying it as development cost only, so they are capitalizing it. It's correct, but you need to be skeptical. You need to be skeptical. Your skepticism comes in. See, there could be an, you know, inappropriate, uh, you know, allocation of costs between research and development costs. There could have been some error behind it. That yes, some research cost has been in, in, inappropriately capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. So the non-current asset, that is the intangible non-current asset capitalization could have some error behind this figure. Yes, behind this figure. 
you're right see we just read one sentence but see how we have identified points we have tried making points from this one single sentence you need to brainstorm yourself you need to think you need to think okay so let us continue the only audit evidence obtained in relation to this balance is as follows okay so there's the only audit evidence obtained right there's only one audit evidence which has been obtained up till now which is as follows let us read the lines coming in now see the first one was agreement of a sample of the costs included in the dollar 600000 capitalized to support documentation such as supplier invoices you see how agreement of a sample of costs sample is always less than 100% right to support documentation such as supplier invoices i don't understand this sentence do you understand I hope you have thought something behind this point, but now le let me te tell you something. See, it's the agreement of a sample of the costs included in the dollar six hundred thousand capitalized to support documentation such as supplier invoices. We are supporting the supplier invoices from the sample of the costs of dollar six hundred thousand. Okay, but we are agreeing the amount as a total, but we are not working or we have not obtained audit evidence. On the nature of the expenditure, is it a revenue expenditure or a, it should be a research expenditure or it is a capital nature expenditure cap, which needs to be capitalized as an intangible non-current asset. Do you think we have found such a point from here? No. Right. Then see, cash flow projection for the project which indicates that a positive cash flow will be generated by 20x8. The projection has been arithmetically checked. So, do you think this is a appropriate work which we have done, or no? Because see, one thing, it tells us that by this project will give us a positive cash flow by 20x8. Today it is 20x4, August 20x4, and right now. The, this project is supposed to give us a positive cash flow by 20x8. So, don't you think this 20 by 20x8 there should have been some um, there would be some figures based which would have been you know uh, some forecasts based on which this development is being done, right? So, the forecasts uh, you know. Now, you see, the projection has been arithmetically checked. So, don't you think this is correct or incorrect? What do you think? Well, as I see, arithmetically correct means you are just checking the totals behind the figures and you are not trying to obtain evidence of, you know, the workings behind that uh, or the assumptions based on which you are project will bring in a positive cash flow what assumptions you are taking in or are those assumptions valid uh, will that happen in actual by 20x8 or not you need to you know check the validity of the projections which have been performed right now see a written representation from management stating that management considers that the development of this new product will be successful Huh. See, written representation in itself does not state anything. It is the last, it is the last, it is the last re resort. When we find nothing, we then take the written representation from the management to support our evidence, to support our working. We do not take written representation just without any working to be done or without any work to be performed by us. So over here it says management considers that the development of this new product will be successful. We are taking written representation for that. Whereas 
my experience there is my understanding of this written representation is that written representation in itself is not so valid evidence it is the last piece of evidence which we take as a conclusion that yes we were not able to obtain anything and now we have tried to take management to written representation to confirm that they agree with this thing or not right so this was it from up till now now let's read further you are aware that the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection which he had prepared so it was the group finance director who has prepared the cash flow projection although this should have been prepared by a proper team by a proper researching team right he was reluctant to answer questions simply saying that the assumptions underlying the projection have been agreed to assumptions contained in the group's business plan what do you think in one go if you read this thing i am sure we will find nothing see you are aware that when the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection which he had prepared he was reluctant to answer questions simply saying that the assumptions underlying the projection have been agreed to the assumptions contained in the group's business plan it is in one go i have read this sentence complete sentence and i i found nothing It's amazing what about you did you find any point or did you also read like me and found nothing now let's go ahead let's read the sentence slowly so that we are able to think of something we can be skeptical in this case see you are aware that the, when when the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection so till here we are able to conclude that the group finance director has made this cash flow projection for the new security system being launched which he had prepared he was reluctant to answer questions he was reluctant means he had no working based on which he had based bed this projection don't you think he was reluctant to answer questions can have so many points he was not having any working behind the assumptions which he did or based on the cash flow projections he did not have any workings behind that he did not uh, want to you know expose anything to the audit team he was trying to hide something from the audit team he was reluctant to answer questions right so over here what i'm trying to explain to you is that see we are trying to identify points we are trying to make points from the scenario and we are need to be skeptical this is what i am trying to bring in your knowledge or in your focus you need to focus on this thing let's see when we read the sentence like we read the above sentence in one go we found nothing everything seemed crystal clear everything seemed perfect but when we are breaking the sentence into small small short short paragraph or sentences we are reading it slowly slowly we are able to think of points we are able to apply professional skepticism to the case study given to us right he was reluctant to answer questions okay he is not willing to answer the questions because he is trying to conceal some fact or he has not done any working based on the projections and he has just made the projection right now simply saying that the assumptions underlying the projection have been agreed to the assumptions contained in the group's business plan but now over here what do you think is the business plan of the group supposed to be constant no i don't really think so isn't it so because the business plans keep changing according to the nature of the you know business according to the environmental changes according to the business changes economical changes pastel you know pastel applies business plan keeps changing it cannot be constant the assumptions cannot be valid everywhere the assumptions can change the assumptions may get old and new assumptions would be required based on the group business plan and what he is saying saying that the assumptions underlying the projection have been agreed to the assumptions contained in the group's business plan 
So it is the group's business plan assumptions that she has tried to apply on this cash flow projection without any further working done on this cash flow projection and because of this he was reluctant to answer questions to the audit team. You see how we have identified points, how we have tried picking up points. Right. I hope you are, it, it is helping you and I hope you are able to follow what I did. Now see, the next the last sentence of development cost. He provided a spreadsheet showing the projection but the underlying information could not be accessed as the file was password protected and the group finance director would not provide the password to the audit team. So he is giving us just the projection spreadsheet of the, having the projection that prepared by the finance director without any underlying information access to the audit team that what was the projection based on and the file the projection file was password protected and the group finance director did not provide the password to the audit team because he was reluctant to answer the questions because he was reluctant to discuss right so you need to be professional apply professional skepticism you need to be skeptical during the scenario case study reading you need to be skeptical i hope i am clear with this i hope you are clear with this now let me highlight this point too because we will be making a point he provided a spreadsheet but the underlying information could not be accessed as the file was password protected because we won't be highlighting too much because if you highlight too much each and everything you will highlight it would make a mess and while you are trying to draft your answer it will be difficult to draft your answer and the group finance director will not provide the password to the audit team right so this is it we have marked he provided us the spreadsheet projection and the file was password protected right so i hope you are clear with this now let us begin with the drafting process for the development cost for the part a2 and part a3 and let us read the requirement again because we have read the case development cost portion and the credit receivables we will be doing in the next video but now since we have read the development cost portion now see it tells us to comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained that is we just discussed what were the audit evidence obtained and we would be commenting on the sufficiency and appropriateness of those evidence obtained but up till now the evidences which we have read related to the development costs uh, my opinion is none of the evidence was sufficient and appropriate as an audit evidence what about you do you agree with what i am saying because in, in, there was not proper working done behind the projections and there was no, no evidence available. So the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence, we would discuss those points again in the answer and we would tell that whether they are sufficient and appropriate or not. But in my opinion, none of them is sufficient and appropriate. Now see, part 3 tells us recommend the actions to be taken by the auditor, what actions can be taken based on the information provided, including the further evidence which should be obtained, and what other evidences we need to obtain. We need to, you know, uh, mention those also, and what other evidences can be obtained to make it sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. I hope you are clear with the point I am sharing with you. And the point I just discussed with you based on the development costs now let us draft the answer let us begin drafting the answer now let us begin drafting the answer for this question number two part a part two and three first we would do the development costs in this video so we just find that the development costs are material to the financial statements so we would state this from the 
sério and then we would proceed further but this remember we will, would be stating that this is material and this would gain us marks will everything is marked the development costs are material to the financial statements right we just declared that the development costs are material to the financial statements that's it so this brings in marks for us right now let us proceed further let me scroll down to the development cost we were told that this uh, development cost is dollar 600000 and we were provided with the figure of materiality that was dollar 400000 so this eventually made development cost material to the financial statements right this is why we declared uh, we stated that this development cost is material to the financial statements now you would be aware or you would be able to recall your studies of the ias where development costs are those costs which are capital in nature remember so over here as an auditor don't you need to be uh, you know as an auditor don't you need to be skeptical you need to be skeptical right you're not straight away agreeing to the development cost being material to the financial statements right you need to you need to be skeptical you need to question yes whether all the cost was capital in nature or not whether this is correct or not this dollar 600000 was correct or not it's right we were provided with the information that agreement of a sample of the costs included in the dollar 600000 capitalized to support the documentation such as supplier invoices this is correct but again was this the were these costs capital in nature or were they uh, you know to be expensed to the profit and loss or not we need to find out the nature right we need to distinguish you able to recall that the there were certain criteria for the development cost to be capitalized the first one was this cost needs to be capital in nature so we need to determine this right we need to determine this that this was capital in nature or revenue in nature expenditure then we were given this cash flow projection of the project which indicates that a positive cash flow will be generated by 20x8 the projection has been arithmetically checked now don't you recall from the earlier studies that arithmetic check is just a check of the total of dollar 600000 it does not arithmetic check itself does not state anything it does not indicate whether this is correct or not it would just tell us the total that yes this total is positive cash flow from the year a 20x8 and we it does not tell us whether this projection is valid or not right arithmetic check is just a check of the totals right it's nothing related to checking the projection whether the projection is correct or not you are aware of this point right you are able to recall what i am trying to tell you then we are, we are told about the written representation from the management stating that management considers that the development of this new product will be successful A written representation from the management don't you think this is uh, insufficient evidence because written representation is always the last resort the last resort always when no evidence is found you take a written representation at the end and it is just a supporting document a support to the evidences you have gathered that yes this is in line with the management representation that written representation by the management that's it you are aware of this right you do 
you can you recall this because written representation in itself is insufficient appropriate audit evidence right then the question told us you are aware that when the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection which he had prepared it was a finance director who prepared it he was reluctant to answer the questions right he was reluctant because he must be hiding something why was he reluctant he must be hiding something or he did not have appropriate assumptions appropriate uh, you know calculations based on the projection he had made simply saying that the assumptions underlying the projection has been agreed to assumptions contained in the group business plan so can the group business plan always be valid can the assumptions be valid every time no right and then he provided the spreadsheet showing the projection but the underlying information was not able to be accessed by the because it was password protected you know so let us draft the points we have recalled the uh, points which we made uh, read over here which we found out over here and now it's the answering time we need to answer the points we need to make points for this portion of the question now to begin with let me come back to the question first we would tell about the nature of the expenditure right capital nature or revenue nature so let us write jot the point down and there is a risk that the research costs which must be expensed right and may have been capitalized yes you agree with this point i have made right then we would talk about the sufficiency there is no sufficient appropriate audit evidence based on what you would say that there is no sufficient appropriate audit evidence to base uh, to identify the revenue nature or the capital nature of the expenditure you know so you would say um, there is no uh, sufficient appropriate audit evidence to conclude that the accounting treatment is appropriate and the intangible assets could be materially misstated right you agree with me see how we have drafted a point now let us come back to the question first agreement of a sample of the costs included in the dollar 600000 capitalized to support documentation such as supplier invoices right so let us jot a point for this one we should jot down a point for this point as well because every sentence in the scenario has a point you should remember that from your earlier studies and from your continuous studies and learning right so let us draft a point for this point again uh you would say agreement of supplier invoices provides evidence of 
the value of expenditure right that is the total of the expenditure but it does not but it does not uh, provide sufficient appropriate audit evidence to the nature of the expenditure right that is capital or revenue expenditure you are aware of this point right we just discussed this point right now now let us come back to the other question now see now see cash flow projection for the project which indicates that a positive cash flow will be generated by 20x8 the projection has been arithmetically checked now don't you think arithmetically checking the cash flow projection gives you any evidence i don't think so what about you if you are checking any cash flow projection or any other statements which you are provided you are checking arithmetically you are checking the total the sum of that trans, of the figures given don't you think those are not a sufficient appropriate audit evidence you are able to uh, recall what i am or you are able to understand what i am saying yes because certainly checking the totals is not a, any kind of evidence you know so let us draft a point for this one too uh, we would begin with saying like um, we would say performing arithmetic check of the cash flow projections does not provide we have to talk about sufficiency in this question sufficient appropriate on it evidence right first we have stated what happens that the performing arithmetic check of the cash flow projections does not provide sufficient appropriate audit evidence but now we need to explain why why this is the case mm, we could say performing arithmetic check of the cash flow projections does not provide sufficient appropriate audit evidence <clears throat> but we would say um, see it does not provide sufficient appropriate audit evidence based on what what reason we are we don't we haven't stated the reason right the examiner wants us to state the reason behind this statement which we are making so let us add a statement you would say uh, appropriate audit evidence on the validity of the projections because we are checking the arithmetic uh, sum of the projections it does not provide the evidence on the validity of the projections and the <coughs> uh, and the valid or no and the assumptions and no rather we would say and it does not provide any evidence on the assumptions on the validity of the assumptions or no not the valid on the evidence on the um, appropriate ness of the assumptions right you need to use audit jargon you know right see 
you need to use the audit jargons, the audit, audit terms and you need to tell your uh, point and then you need to justify by giving the reasoning behind that point to complete your point and you can see we have done the same thing in all the parts over here now see what comes in next a written representation from the management stating that the management considers that the development of this new product will be successful we discussed this point earlier that written representation in itself is not any sort of evidence it is the last resort of evidence that is obtained from the management right so we would have to draft a point for this one first because this is coming in line right first we talked about this portion then we talked about this one then we talked about the cash flow projection and the arithmetic check and now it's the written representation we are going in the order the question has given us the points right we are following the same order right so let us write down the answer for this written representation now we would say that it appears that the written representation is the only evidence obtained, right? Because the case tells us the same thing. But we are not defining what is this written representation evidence of uh, evidence obtained for the new obtained for the new product being developed and this uh, yes and that it will and the success uh, forecasted right but this is not complete right now we would say that uh, the written representation is not sufficient appropriate audit evidence in itself and it is used to support the other audit evidence obtained. Right? We have explained that why written representation in itself is not sufficient appropriate audit evidence as it's the only evidence obtained uh, for the success of the product being developed and that this is always used as support to the other audit evidence obtained. So we, we have defined why this is insufficient appropriate audit evidence over here. You are able to follow because your following is necessary over here. Now let us look at the other point coming up. You are aware that when the group finance director was asked about the cash flow projection which he had prepared, he was reluctant to answer the questions. Simply saying that the assumptions underlying the projection have been agreed to the assumptions contained in the group business plan, which we just discussed that this could be invalid because the group business plan could obviously be the assumptions based on those plan cannot be valid anymore. He provided a spreadsheet showing the projection but the underlying information could not be accessed as the file was password protected and the group finance director would not provide the password to the audit team. Now over here, one point is certain that we would comment or we would make a point based on the password protected spreadsheet or the information underlying the spreadsheet which was password protected and the audit team was not going access to this file 
one is this point and other point we could make about the group finance director could be um, about his behavior his attitude we could discuss this behavior with the audit team right so you see since this was a big paragraph right so we are able to draft two points we are able to think of two points from this one right so um, I think we should begin drafting the point these two points first then we should think of the later part of the question so first we would draft the point based on the information provided already uh, we would say the group finance director did not allow the audit team uh, the audit team access to the information supporting the spreadsheet uh, the spread sheet showing the projection right and uh, he was reluctant to answer the questions too right so and he was re reluctant to answer the questions right we have stated this point from the scenario till now now why this is a issue what should be done by the audit team the audit of the projection right which was in the spreadsheet uh, the audit of the projection should be approached with a high degree of skepticism right We are able to see how we are drafting points. Now one more point which we were just discussed earlier based on the group finance director was that you should discuss his behavior with the uh, audit committee, right? So we could say uh, the attitude of the group finance director should be discussed with the audit committee right uh, why we should discuss with the audit committee what would this gain us so we could say that uh, the attitude of the group finance director should be discussed with the audit committee with the objective we are stating the reason behind it with the objective of making all necessary information available to the audit team right we stated the reason why we want the uh, we why we want to discuss the attitude of the finance director with the audit team or with the audit committee rather right now um, one more thing which we could have drafted um, I'm thinking of uh, based on this dollar 600,000 figure which was provided to us we can say that uh, more evidence should be obtained to confirm or to you know what we say to find out whether this dollar six hundred thousand was capital in nature completely or not, right? So let us draft 
uh, another point for this and why how would you distinguish between uh, you know capital nature and revenue nature of the expense that is 600000 you would identify or you would further do you know you're working on this cost and the relevant figures and you would find out well whether any research cost has been capitalized or not right we would try to find out whether any research cost also has been capitalized or it's the only the development cost the development phase of the uh, product that has only that is being capitalized right so uh, we can say let us draft a point for this one we would say the audit team the audit team should obtain further evidences for uh, the audit team should obtain further evidences and not for to distinguish between the research costs and the development costs right now what would this give us to determine whether dollar six hundred thousand should all be capitalized right you're able to think of this point now let's come back to the question and the requirement because you need to stick to the requirement right it was 11 marks in all we had to comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidences obtained based on the development cost which we just did and we have to recommend the actions taken by the auditor which we did up till now including the further evidence it should be obtained so it's the further evidences which we need to make points for but you know you are always provided with extra 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 points in the scenario so you must uh, stick to those points and complete your marks required only you should complete your marks at 11 marks but you should balance your answer based on the sufficiency and appropriateness recommending the actions and the fertile evidences that need to be obtained right so that you are able to cover up all the aspects of the question and you are able to gain maximum marks available we you could say following further evidences should be obtained right now based on this what following evidences should be obtained the first one i think could be that we could uh, obtain further evidences for the dollar six hundred thousand to uh, determine whether all of them are capital or revenue in nature so we could make a point that uh, we would say that a further review or no a further right no we could say that um, uh, um, more evidence should be obtained by further reviewing the sample of costs included in dollar six hundred thousand to determine or not determine actually to uh, distinguish between capital and revenue expenditure right now what else could we think of Now, if you recall from your previous studies of the 
audit and assurance paper that is was the F8 paper earlier. Would you think that you would uh, make a sample? You would uh, determine or you would review the purchase invoices for a sample of the cost to determine whether they were in the name of the company or not, and to determine whether the rights and obligations. Uh, based on which the capitalization is being uh, done are met or not the assertions behind those rights and obligations right I know we are going back to F8 studies over here but this point can also be made right so we could draft a point for this one we would say uh, for the sample of costs review the purchase invoices right to ensure they were in the groups name right and the uh, and the uh, rights and obligations and the rights and obligations based on the invoices Result the capitalization criteria, right? Now, what else can we think of? Based on what uh, this projection, right? Uh, which the finance director made don't you think there would have been some market research before the development process there could be um, some market research some you know research based on the need or based on the demand of this product then obviously the company would have uh, decided to manufacture this product or to develop this product am I right So what we can do is we can draft a point for this one that uh, results of any market research right uh, to support the assertion and going back to the assertions of F8 uh, that the new product will be successful and generate future cash flows or future rather future uh, economic benefits right now can you think of anything else come on it's your chance now it's your it working or it's your choice now. Can you think of anything else? One thing right now, like we made a researching research point that there was some market research we should evaluate or we should uh, further gain evidence for those. So, don't you think we were not provided anything over here related to the research cost? That there was any research done by the finance director or by the comp or by the group or you know anything like that. So without any, can we uh, put up a point like if there should be a discussion with the management that how they've incurred development costs without any research because we are not provided any information based on the research. Yes, yes, yes. I know this was difficult, but you need to think. You need to brainstorm yourself. We could say a discussion with the management to identify 
how they have incurred the development costs without carrying out any market research you agree with me were you able to think of this point well you should have thought of this point earlier but since you were not able to it does not make any difference i would suggest you to brainstorm yourself to identify more and more points and to evaluate yourself based on the workings right you should evaluate yourself you should brainstorm yourself because right now it's the time you where you can work on this thing right you can bring up points you can easily uh what you call you will you can easily draft points it's this is the time of trial and error the actual exam is not the time of the trial and error right i have given the heading development cost in this case because the next is the trade receivables which we have to study now let us shift to the trade receivables first we discussed the development costs then we answered the development cost portion now comes in the trade receivables because this is part of the same requirement so let us read the trade receivables information provided in the scenario trade receivables recognized in the group's current assets includes a balance of dollar 500000 stop stop reading Re read again trade receivables recognized in the group's current assets includes a balance of dollar 500000 stop dollar 500000 does it does it bring any information can you recall anything you are absolutely right you are absolutely right it is material to the financial statements the materiality level was dollar 400000 which was given at the beginning of this question now that we are working on the individual components of this question we are doing trade receivables as an individual component and over here we are provided with a figure coming up of dollar 500000 which is included in the trade receivables in the current assets portion of the group financial statements and this is material to the financial statements you are absolutely right now let's read further dollar 500000 relating to a specific customer it's a single customer that owes this amount to the group hamline company okay it is hamline company which is owing this balance of dollar 500000 which is material to the financial statements of the group let's read further audit procedures indicate that at 31st december 20x4 the date is always important the balance was more than 6 months overdue for payment in relation to this balance the following procedures have been performed all right perfect now let's read this sentence again audit procedures indicate that at 31st december 20x4 the balance was more than 6 months overdue for payment in relation to this balance the following procedures have been performed okay this balance was overdue by 6 months and at the 31st december 2004 and the following procedures were performed in relation to this balance okay agreement of the balance to invoices and original customer order this is again kind of an arithmetic check for this balance or uh, for the figure this itself is insufficient appropriate audit evidence i hope you agree with me right the agreement of the balance to invoices and original customer order this is just in kind of checking the orders and 
invoices matching the invoices to the orders this is nothing to do with the you know procedure based on the audit based for the audit right now discussion with the group credit controller who states that we are in discussion with hamline company and we are confident that some or all of the amount due to us will be paid now what kind of a discussion the group credit controller is doing over here where he is confident that some or all of the amount due would be paid right so this is not a proper audit procedure that has been performed right this these are not sufficient appropriate audit evidence do you feel like these are sufficient appropriate audit evidence i don't really think so what about you you need to think and you need to answer me right you are right this in itself is not a sufficient appropriate audit evidence now see we have always allowed this customer extended credit terms and they have always paid eventually okay so this is information is saying that they have always given extended credit terms to this customer and they have always paid eventually but again don't you think this uh, something should be over here because we are not sure that we are not provided with any information they have always paid eventually is being provided but we are not provided with any information that this payment which was eventually received was in was in you know in accordance with or you can say in was for the outstanding bills or was it for the next bills which were due and then company as included in the trade receivables was included in the trade receivables direct confirmation audit procedure whereby a sample of customers were asked to confirm the outstanding balance but no reply was received by, from handling company and direct confirmation as an audit procedure is just a confirmation of the audit is just a confirmation of the data that the, this following amount is due it does not tell whether they are in pension whether they will be paying this outstanding amount or when will they be paying this outstanding amount no it's just a confirmation that yes this amount is due that's it so this is also an insufficient appropriate audit evidence in now let us go to the drafting process we need to draft the answer we would first tell that this balance is material to the financial statements so we would say uh, the trade receivable is material or we would say the trade receivable of dollar 500000 is material to the financial statements one mark okay right you secured one mark over here now what we need to think of uh, is let us come back to the question one thing i would like to suggest or i would like to say is that is this 500000 was outstanding on 31st december 20x4 and we are not sure whether this whole amount is to be recovered or would be paid eventually by the amline co or not so does that it call for some impairment over here yes any bad debt should be removed any amount which is not recoverable or which is a bad debt should be removed from this 500000 yes you are doing you are following me right absolutely right so let us comment or let us make a point based on this one again we would say uh, the group financial statements would be materially misstated
if any necessary adjustment that is uh, we can see in the bracket reduction in value is not made to the outstanding balance of the or rather Hamlenko, sorry right let me correct the spellings statements balance right 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 be able to follow what I did or what point I made right now let us come back to the question the following audit procedure is performed agreement of the balance to invoices and original customer order we just discussed that this is insufficient appropriate audit evidence because agreeing the invoices to the original customer order does not give us any confirmation on the recoverability of the balance due right so what we could do is we could craft a point for this one you would say um, you would say the direct no 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 we would say agreeing the balance to invoices and order forms may may provide you will not go it will may not you may provide evidence of existence we are for going back to the F8 portion to some extent evidence of existence but it does not provide but it does not provide evidence on the recoverability of the balance due right you able to follow what I did now let's see again uh, See now this point coming up is discussion with the group credit controller who states that we have we are in discussion with M9 Co and we are confident that some or all of the amount due to us will be paid. Uh, let us comment on this one now. What do you think? Yes, we would go in an order which the exam question is giving us. We would say um discussing this situation with the credit controller uh, uh, provides us with some background information with, or rather with, with some information of M line O right but you would say that it is not sufficient audit evidence to support the continued recognition of the balance in the group financial statements see how we have drafted a point we just told the issue and we gave the reasoning behind this issue let us read on further now it tells us Hamline Co was included in the trade receivables and direct confirmation audit procedure whereby a sample of customers were asked to confirm the outstanding balance but no response reply was received but no reply was received from the hamline co right 
so uh, we can draw, make a point for this one too let us discuss this point or let us draft this point now we would say that um, the direct confirmation by M line O in the sample is appropriate, but this does not indicate its intention to pay the outstanding balance and there was no response received from mlm co in this regard right we have drafted this point too i hope i hope i hope you are able to follow what we are doing or what we are discussing right now now uh, since we have discussed all the points provided over here we are done with this portion now now what we need to do is we need to draft further evidences that could be obtained by the audit team in respect of this outstanding balance of dollar five hundred thousand from hamline co so let this that further evidences has nothing to do with this portion of the case so let us think and let us brainstorm ourselves and let us draft points we can say further evidences could be right now what could be the further evidences we need to think of it you also need to think of it along with me so that you are able to draft points in the exam easily now one thing which i was thinking of was that there could be some measures taken by the group uh, or the based on the credit controller that how to gain response from hamlenko or how to recover the debt from the hamlenko right so we could uh, say that uh, any measures the group has taken to recover the debt uh, to recover that and any response received from M line O or right we would say that any any evidence on the measures the group has taken right this sounds better then further we could say is um, we could uh, you know if it what we say we could review the post year end cash receipts to see if there were any receive uh, any payments received from Hamline Co. So we would say um, review the post year end cash receipts for any amounts received. From M9 Co to determine if the amount is still recoverable, right? Um, I don't think I can think of any other further evidences which we could make, but there's no limit. If you are able to think of any other further evidence you are most welcome to draft a point for yourself 
and in all now have a look let's have a look development costs we have drafted so many points because this paragraph was huge and there were so many points we could think of including the further evidences Credit receivables, we have tried drafting as many points as they were possible and we have drafted two further evidences which were easily thought or which were easily being, we were able to draft easily and further I think this is sufficient for 11 marks which were the required marks of the question. So this is it from my side and based on this part and I would suggest you to brainstorm yourself practice more and more and to you know easily pass the exam this is my opinion and this is my advice practice yourself practice practice and practice because only practice will bring, uh, make you perfect and will bring up points during the exam you would be able to think of the points during the exam okay so let's uh, end with this video over here and now let's move on to the next part B of this video. Towards the end of this video, you need to remember, greatness doesn't happen overnight. It's the result of continuous effort, boundless curiosity and a thirst for improvement. Investing time in these videos and engaging with past AAA exam questions is an investment in the brighter future you're shaping up. Keep your focus sharp, your learning continuous and your eyes focused on your goals. Best of luck as you navigate your studies. May your dedication lead you to success in the AAA exam.